Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to my shop. In this video, I'm going to show you how I make chalk holders using these kits from Penn State Industries. I call it PSI for short. And make these chalk holders. There's a clip to it and everything. Has this ferrule end here. You loosen that up and the chalk will slide in and out. Tighten it up and it stays in position again. I'll show you how I make these. These are very popular with people, with teachers, professors, um, and woodworkers for laying out uh, the cut marks on like sheet goods. One end here has an opening and that's so that if the length of chalk is longer than this, a lot of teachers get some fairly long pieces of chalk, it'll have room to stick out there and then kind of use it up as they go. Okay, the chalk holder kit comes from Penn State Industries in this package. And this is a PKCKCH. The gold one is a PKCK24, which has 24 karat plating on it. What is in this kit is The instructions on how to do it, and there's two sides to the instructions that uh, show you how to do the turning and shapes and so forth, how to assemble it. Also in the kit here, we have a 12 and a half millimeter brass tube, a ferrule end nut, which holds the, you know, the chalk in place while it's in the holder. This comes apart and you can see it uh, compresses to hold the chalk in place. And when you screw it on, that uh, compresses the grip. Another part that comes with it is the pocket clip. And this may be a part you may or may not want to use. And then on the end is uh, the end cap that goes on. Kind of goes over the pocket clip and goes on to the very end of the uh, chalk holder. So one of the uh, first things you're going to want to do after you make sure you have your kit complete is to select the materials that you want to make your chalk holder out of. Uh, there's a lot of uh, various exotic hardwoods you can use, domestic hardwoods also such as red oak or maple or walnut. So there's a variety of them that you can find. You can see some examples of what I've made at my Etsy shop. You can see various uh, things and bodies and materials that I've used on various products and pens. Okay, for this particular kit, I'm going to use a piece of zebra wood. And zebra wood is known for, it has very straight lines uh, and very contrasting lines compared to wood grains of other woods. Also, once you cut your blank and you mount your tube in it, uh, Another accessory you're going to need is a pair of bushings for mounting on your lathe that gives you a guide as to how far down to uh, turn your piece. These bushings are, part number is PKCKBU. Take my workpiece and I'll put the bushing on it and mark it just slightly longer than what the bushing is. And this will be where I will cut this off at. I just draw a straight line with my square. So I come here to my bandsaw and I line up uh, on my cutter here the cutting mark that I made to cut this to length for the brass tube. Now my next step will be to mark a center on this and then go to my drill press and drill the 12.5 millimeter hole all the way through this. Marking the center, I use this center finder that I have. And let's see the other side is. Then take uh, my piece of wood, put this on there, hold it in a consistent position all the time and I mark a line with the pencil. 
I'm going to go around and do this four times. And, as you may see, these lines are not exact all the time, but between where these lines land up at, I can find my center. That's because none of these blocks are ever perfectly square. So you've got to go around it four times to get it, find a good center. Then I take my scribe and mark it. And that gives me good center for my drill bit to start on. Okay, so here I've chucked up a 12.5 millimeter bit into my drill press chuck and I got the workpiece mounted into this holder which holds the workpiece uh, in line with the drill bit so we get a straight cut. Sometimes that's still a little bit off because uh, this holder is not that precise. And what I did is set my drill stop so that hits the bottom there. Now I'll drill through this very slowly it's not a brad point bit, this is a 135 degree point bit. Okay, maybe that's it. Back out occasionally to clear out your wood chips. And careful you're not getting your bit too hot. Be careful when you put your fingers there so you don't get your fingers cut. And... Okay, I've got this drilled out so the hole's all the way through. You can see it's um, off center maybe a little bit, but there's still enough meat and wood there for me to turn it to shape that I need. Okay, so the step I have to do next is to glue this brass tube into uh, the workpiece here, or the, the blank, so it'll glue that in there uh, for doing the turning. What I usually do is clean up the tube a little bit with some sandpaper. It doesn't take much just to make it a little bit shiny, like that. Then, use this insertion tool. And I use a medium CA glue. So I will spread a little bit on here. There we go. Insert this into the body. I like to go back and forth a little bit. And use a paper towel, make sure I've got it shoved in all the way. We'll give that a few minutes to dry. Then I'll trim off the ends. With this oscillating sander here, I've got this table that I made that fits into the slot here. And then this gives me square to the belt. What I will do is find a couple of good square sides on this to use and square it up to those. Trim up these ends to square them up. So I get these down until I can see the uh, shiny brass and it's even with the end of the wood. We're set for that now. Okay, next is to mount this onto the lathe with the bushings. Got the seven millimeter uh, pen mandrel that we use. First bushing goes on, work peaks goes on, and the bushing fits inside the tube there when it mounts. And that piece. Then we use this type of uh, tailstock that just uh, goes right up to it so you don't have to use spacers to take up any gaps. Then I will just tighten this a little bit to give it a good grip on there. Get my tool rest in place and select a lathe chisel 
I use these uh, carbide magic uh, chisels. Got these from Penn State Industries. So I try and set my level so that's corners straight across. Chisel should line up with about that, with that edge there. And out enough of a gap here, maybe a finger width for me. So you don't get too close there if you can get caught up. Uh, you don't want to be too far apart either because then you can flip your chisel up. So we're going to start basically first uh, to get it to a round shape and then we'll trim it down to be the same diameter as these outsides of these bushings are. Now I'm down to my last grit. That's coming out very smoothly. Comes out very smooth. Now I put a finish on, so I'm going to hit it with a steel wool here a little bit first. Here with a steel wall, then used a little bit of a cotton uh, cloth to clear off any of the debris from the steel wall and the sanding. Something else I do is I put lines on this to uh, give it a more of a decorative look and also helps with some grip. So to do that, I'll start out using my a parting tool, but I'm going to use this pointed part of it just to barely make some lines in there. And then I will use some wires to burn in the lines to make them dark. Then I use uh, this Balin's wood turnish, uh, yeah, wood turnish finish, and this stuff works well. Just got to shake it up good. And I just put a little dab on the rag. Turn the speed down on this so it's slower, and just kind of wipe it on. Give it a few seconds. A little bit more on there. Then I'll give it uh, a few minutes to dry and put on another coat. Okay, I did another coat and this is the finished product and looks very nice and shiny. It'll give it great protection. Next step will be assembling the parts together on the blank here. Okay, so here we are to assemble this. I use this pen press kit tool. <laughs> Let's see, the first part I'm going to press in is going to be the holder, the ferrule or the yeah the ferrule and compression ring. I'm going to put that in at the same end as where I put these lines at. Take out a few spacers. Get that fit in and just press it together. The next part is to put the end cap on with the pocket clip. Try and find a good place to line up the wood grain with. This looks like probably a good position. Try 
to get it straight on the press here so you're pushing straight. And we have a completed chuck holder. Now there's a hole in the end here in the cap end because some chalk sticks that teachers get are quite longer than the chalk holder is, so they need some space for that to protrude out. Or they can break. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something from it, got something out of it, please give me a like. If you want to subscribe, then you'll be able to see future videos as I bring them out. Thank you.